In a flurry of headlines, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau finds himself once again at the center of global discussions, drawing eyes and ears worldwide. This time, it's not just another press release or parliamentary debate. While this global theater promises grand ambitions and lofty rhetoric, the real story lies beneath the surface, begging for a closer look. As the son of former Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, Justin has always been surrounded by politics, international diplomacy, and the weight of public scrutiny. This legacy, coupled with his charm and charisma, has catapulted him to the forefront of global politics. His speech at the UN, which promises to touch upon critical issues like climate change, global security, and economic equity, is awaited with bated breath by supporters and critics alike. But in the whirlwind of international diplomacy, one must ask, is this truly a quest for global betterment or a strategic move to divert attention from the domestic pressures mounting against his administration? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we get into today's video, take a quick second to follow our Facebook page where we post multiple times every day reporting straight facts on Trudeau's disappointments. We will leave you the link below. Click the follow button so you don't miss our next viral post destroying Trudeau. Trudeau's unappearance comes off the back of his pronouncement that now, more than ever, world leaders needed to set aside differences for future generations. A captivating thought, but we've heard similar from him, especially when his government is under domestic scrutiny. While he waxes poetic about global unity at the summit of the future, critics can't help but note how often his speeches seem to conveniently omit specifics. Is this truly about global instability or just another platform to boost his diplomatic ego? As we meet here in New York at the UN General Assembly for this summit of the future, we're at a global inflection point. Faced with escalating instability undermining the very foundations of the international order, beset by the increasingly dire costs of climate change, contending with rising inequality that is leaving the most vulnerable behind, plagued by the erosion of women's rights, LGBT plus rights, and indigenous rights, and grappling with dire humanitarian crises perpetuating record levels of displacement, we have a choice. On the one hand, we can bury our heads in the sand, eschewing multilateralism in favor of short-sighted self-interest, or we can recognize that collectively we have a responsibility to set our differences aside, to confront the serious global challenges, and to deliver on a pact for the future that builds a more peaceful world, but also one where everyone, every generation, has a real and fair shot. Yes, the summit aims to tackle big challenges like Russia's invasion of Ukraine and climate change, but one can't help but chuckle at the irony. Trudeau, who famously jet sets around in carbon-emitting aircraft to discuss carbon footprints, seems to enjoy the global spotlight more than facing Canada's own pressing issues. It's like watching someone lecture others on healthy living while munching on a double cheeseburger. His carbon-heavy travel itinerary stands as a stark contrast to the environmental consciousness he advocates, raising questions about the authenticity of his commitment to sustainable practices. Rumor has it that some member nations have pushed back on aspects of the proposed Pact of the Future, a blueprint intended to address varied global challenges. Yet Trudeau revels in the idea of immediate agreements. The question looms, is this optimism, naivety, or simply a strategic avoidance of his own government's shortcomings? His vision for a globally unified front against pressing issues may resonate well in diplomatic circles, but the practicalities and potential fallout at home remain significant concerns. In Canada, that's what we are squarely focused on. As I travel across my country, Canadians of all walks of life, but particularly young Canadians, tell me that they're worried. They're worried about the state of the world and the future. But most importantly, they're worried about the very promise of Canada. The promise that if you work hard, you can do better than the generations that preceded you. That promise is slipping out of reach, so as a government, we are stepping up. The solution to anxiety and angst is not to deceive and deflect, but to take action. We know that confident, successful countries invest in their citizens, in their workers, in their middle class in national $10 a day childcare that saves families money while ensuring women can choose the best path for themselves. In nutritious school meals so our kids can focus on learning and growing. In an ambitious housing plan that will deliver good, 
abundant and affordable homes, in a national dental care program that in its first months has already delivered quality care to three quarters of a million Canadians, in a growth and industrial strategy that creates good paying, community building, middle class jobs, all while fighting climate change, these are choices that deliver on the promise of Canada for every generation. The irony of Trudeau co-chairing the UN Sustainable Development Goals Advocates Group isn't lost on critics either. Advocating for a world free from poverty and hunger contrasts sharply with the growing economic challenges Canadians face under his leadership. While the 2030 agenda sounds noble, it's not easy to stomach grand international plans when local issues like housing affordability and inflation seem ignored. How can Trudeau effectively address global poverty when the specter of a rising cost of living looms over Canadian households? Let's also touch on his meeting with other notable figures. Scheduled talks with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and New York Governor Kathy Hochul look impressive on paper. But one can't help but wonder if these discussions will yield any tangible outcomes or merely serve as photo opportunities for Trudeau to parade back home. His knack for grandstanding on international stages has become somewhat of a signature move, yet his government continually faces backlash for lackluster domestic policies. The optics of high-profile meetings may bolster his image abroad, but the tangible benefits for Canadians are less evident. Ah, and let's not forget his appearance on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. While some may argue it's an opportunity to charm an international audience, others see it as a distraction. A convenient way to dodge the real heat from opposition motions and domestic dissatisfaction. Trudeau's team likely hopes the charm offensive will divert attention from the confidence motion set to challenge his government in the House of Commons, wrought by none other than the Conservative Party. The entertainment value of such appearances cannot be denied, but it does little to address the underlying challenges facing his administration. The summit also aims to address the reform of the UN and reinvigorate multilateralism in an ever-polarizing world. Discussions on a more inclusive UN Security Council are commendable. But can Trudeau strike a balance between global responsibilities and urgent domestic demands? Critics argue that his ambitions might be clouded with lofty rhetoric and disconnect from the issues closer to home. Engaging Haiti with solutions that are Haitian-led sounds inclusive on a diplomatic level, Yet the constant instability in such regions raises questions about the effectiveness of these well-meaning dialogues. It's easy to get swept up in the grandiosity of international diplomacy, especially with a stage as prominent as the UN. However, as Trudeau's government weathers internal criticism and potential votes of non-confidence, it becomes increasingly clear that perhaps the grand gestures on global stages are more a play for diversion than solutions. Skeptics argue that Trudeau's persistent absence and focus on international clout come in the time when Canadians need him most on home soil. These choices reflect a commitment to investing in our people and in our future, but also a commitment to tackle global problems that we all share. Les changements climatiques. Climate change and inflation don't stop at borders. Inequality is a problem for the entire world, for people from all walks of life. If we really want to serve our own citizens, we must together tackle the great global challenges. We should work within institutions such as the United Nations and renew our commitment to the Sustainable Development Agenda for 2030. We need to protect and support the rule of law and democratic values. We should, make effort, we should spearhead efforts to reform in the international financial institutions. We must put women's and girls' rights at the very heart of our efforts, much like we have done with our feminist international assistance policy. We must recognise also that rich countries such as Canada have a duty to fight climate change, which is what we're doing through our commitment of $5 billion towards global climate financing efforts and we are the first big oil and gas producing country to establish a, an emission ceiling in this sector. As the old saying goes, charity begins at home. The juxtaposition of his global rhetoric with domestic challenges highlights the growing disconnect between his international aspirations and the everyday realities faced by Canadians. As Justin Trudeau wraps up his tour of diplomacy at the UN, one cannot help but ponder the balance he strikes between his global ambitions and domestic responsibilities. While his intentions might be painted with broad strokes of international cooperation and future-oriented goals, the nagging question remains. 
are these initiatives a mere ploy to deflect from the internal strife as government faces? We've watched Trudeau's tenure fill the polished speeches, grand promises, and a media presence that rivals the best of them. Yet, the tangible benefits for Canadians seem more elusive. How can a leader advocate so vigorously for global ideals while seemingly sidestepping the pressing issues at home? The dichotomy between his global advocacy and domestic performance raises critical questions about the efficacy and priorities of his leadership. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trudeau's role at the UN truly benefits Canada, or is it a calculated diversion from the pitfalls of his administration? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.